Hi, I'm Erica Hawkins. I'm a hairstylist in Los Angeles, and I've got Liberty here with me today. We're going to do a little bit of a makeover on Liberty. And so our end result, we're going to put a nice fringe, a uh, nice bang on there for Liberty. We're going to put in a nice pixie shape that's triangular from the bird's eye view, so from the back to the front and also triangular from the back hairline to the front also. So it'll be a really fun shape change. I'm excited to show you all. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Liberty's new bang set in. I like to do that first just so, so that both myself and the client can start to envision the new look start to happen and I think adding bangs in right away is a great way to start the tone. So I'm gonna start by sectioning out about a one inch section of the front of Liberty's hairline because she's got a pretty severe uh, disconnect happening. It's mostly going to start in on the very top, but I will work a little bit of framing in these shorter pieces along the sides. So I'm just taking a moment to look at Liberty's natural hair patterns, any cowlick she has, manipulating the hair a little bit to see how it will fall on its own. And that's gonna help me decide how much tension to use when I'm cutting and if I wanna account for any extra length. Because I know Liberty's got a little bit of wave in her hair and she's got a little bit of a jumpy cowlick just in the front right here, I'm going to Cut, cut her bangs just a little bit longer when they're wet so that I can make sure they're just where I want them when they're dry. I'm gonna start with a thin narrow section in the center hold this out vertically and I want it to hit just about so I can measure that out, hold this vertically, and just peel some of that length away. Next, I'm going to take a parallel section right next to that first section and over direct it into that center. Now I'm going to move to the opposite side, take another section parallel to that first section in the center. And same thing, I'm going to over direct this section to that first section in the middle. And this is just going to create a soft roundness to the bang. And I'm going to continue these fringe sections the same way. And I'm going to over direct everything into that center section towards the middle. can see my guide right there. I slide just past it. I always like to take a minute, assess if I like how they're sitting. And I do. So I've sectioned out one more section just behind that first section, about an inch behind it, and I continued that all the way to the side. And I'm going to start framing her face a little bit with this next section. So I'll start this next, next section in very much the same way, starting with that center section 
and then over directing parallel sections toward the center. I'm elevating a little bit higher this time. I'm taking my next section, over directing that to the center, and I'm elevating a little bit higher this time just to create a bit of a layered effect in the bangs. Last section on this side, same thing, over directing towards the center. Right now I'm looking to see which hair wants to fall down into the side versus the hair that wants to fall forward and live more on the front of the forehead. And that's how I distinguish what's going to live more in the bang section and what's going to live towards the side of her face. Just looking at her natural growth patterns. I'm gonna pull this section forward, elevate up slightly, and just frame her a little bit softer. Her sides are already quite short, but that doesn't mean we can't change them in a really impactful way. I told you a little bit. We'll move on to the other side and work the same way, taking our parallel sections over directed back towards the center. And then I'll do the same bit of fine tuning on this side as well. On this side, I see that some of these longer hairs actually want to sit on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and include those into the side frame rather than in the bangs. Now that we have her bang section set in, and I'm feeling pretty happy with how they're looking, they're pretty cute. Um, now I'm gonna switch directions and I'm gonna start in the back of her head. So I'm working on the nape of Liberty's neck next. So I'm gonna have Liberty turn her head down for me, which is gonna allow me to access the nape a little easier. I'm starting with a vertical section in the center back. I'm gonna pull this hair straight out from the head and cut vertically. Using about a medium sized stroke. And now I'm gonna continue with parallel sections over directing to the previous section. Pull that straight out from the head, over directing to my first section. As I'm working, my sections are almost curving slightly with the curvature of Liberty's head. 
over directing to the previous section. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So we now cut everything below the occipital bone and I'm going to move up and repeat the process below the crown. I'm leaving the top of the head for last. I like to work in sections because that helps me stay organized and I really feel in control of the haircut. I'm now going to start in the center back section starting from just below the crown and working to the area in the nape that we've already previously cut. I have her sectioned up from just below the crown in the back and along the parietal ridge to the front hairline. So I've got my first section in the middle sectioned out. I'm going to elevate this out from the head and I'm also looking at the section that we've cut previously. And what I want to do, I'm going to let that just slide out of my fingertips and I'm actually going to come in from underneath, elevating as I go. And I'm also slightly sliding my fingers out so I can build up a little bit more length as I work my way into the crown. So now we've created a new guide that connects to the nape, but is cut a bit more sh short to long at the crown. I'm going to take my next section parallel to that first section in the middle. I'm going to work in much the same way, over directing to the previous section finding my guide from underneath and cutting from underneath to assist me in leaving more length at the crown. And as I'm working and the curvature of Liberty's head is changing, I also like to adjust her head to help me with my own body positioning. Finding my guide from underneath. And while I'm cutting this time, since I'm coming from underneath, I'm using more of the heel of the razor. And this shape is really just going to hug her head beautifully. As I'm transitioning into the side of the head, I'm still working much the same way. I'll be overdirecting everything to the previous. And I know that she's got some shorter length here on the sides already, and a few pieces of the length from the top that we're incorporating that were hovering just around that parietal ridge. As we work into the sides, I no longer have the guide from underneath but I do still have my guide from behind. Now we're at our last section in the front hairline. And we've really just got a little bit to cut because if you remember, we already fine tuned this to sit nicely against her face when we did the fringe. 
And now we're just going to make sure everything blends well from the back to the front. So still over directing this back. It's already previously been over directed forward when we cut the fringe. So there's really just a little bit at the top that needs to be cut. Do a little bit of detailing around the ear. Now that we've completed the first side, we'll repeat that on the opposite side as well. Okay, so now we're going to move to the top of the head, and I'm going to start with a center section from the back crown to the front hairline, and it's that natural center parting down the middle of the head. And I can get my guide from underneath the top of that last section at the crown that we did. I'm going to use that as a visual guide so I know so I know the length that I'm going to cut my layers on top. And the shape I want to create is a little shorter in the front and then gaining just a little more length towards that front hairline. And then we're meeting up with the bangs that we've already set in and pulling the hair straight out from the head. I'll let my guide just slip out of my fingers and I'm cutting up. I'm creating a new guide for the layers on top. There's where I left off. And I'm sliding my fingers slightly as I go so that I can preserve more length towards the front of the head. So here's my last section, and here's where the bangs that we previously cut meet up with our current layer. Right now, I'm just going to continue with the shape I've been creating, knowing that the layers will hang over her bangs slightly. There'll be a slight disconnect, which is kind of fun to play around with and do our finishing touches at the end and really personalize the look. So now I've finished our first guide section down the center of the head, and I'm going to continue taking parallel sections I'm going to pull each section out from the head. So this time my guide section will be traveling to the next section. And that way I'm keeping the shape more round from ear to ear. So I've got my next section on top parted out. So we've got our guide section down the center and we've got a parallel section. Just for ease, I've dropped this section down on the crown because that's how it naturally falls. And right around here is her whorl and this hair falls forward. I'm combing this section straight out from the head. And I'm including my guide, but I'm making sure to comb my guide to the next section rather than over directing this section to my guide. And that's gonna help me create a rounder shape from ear to ear. So I let my guide from underneath fall out. I can see the guide behind what I'm cutting. And I start my next section of layering.
we've got just one more section on this side where the top of the head meets the sides which we've already cut. I'm tilting Liberty's head slightly towards me, which assists me in my overdrafting. everything up from underneath. And meeting up to our fringe in the front. And now we're going to work the same way on the opposite side of the head. So we've cut the top layers and as you can see the shape has a slight roundness to it because of the way we over-directed the sections as we were cutting. And now the last step, because we have a bit of a disconnect from the top to the sides, I'm just gonna go through and fine tune and really personalize those areas where the top of the head meets the sides, so right along the parietal ridge, and also fine tune where our layer met up with our initial fringe. And I like a little bit of this disconnect. I'm seeing as I'm, I see, I'm seeing as I'm combing. She's got this cool two-tone color situation. And so really now I'm just using my eye and deciding that I just want to take a little bit off the end. So I'm just combing the hair down, looking for how it's moving. And I just see that this little bit is a little longer than I want. I'm going to pinch that and just trim the tiniest bit off the ends. Again, this is more of a visual technique. Just using my eye to see what looks cool. I'm now combing the rest of the hair down, seeing how it naturally falls, and just using my eye to decide what I want to tweak. This I'm going to trim a little bit, pinch it, and cut. I'm just really free forming and fine tuning our connection from the top to the side. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Last step, I just want to fine tune the area where our layer on top met our fringe. If you remember, as we were cutting, we reached a point where we had already cut the bangs and our layer continued. I'm going to mimic the same sections that I used when initially cutting the fringe. So I've got a section down the middle, and now I'm including the bangs I've already cut, and the layer I cut on top. And just this little heavy bit on top, this is where the layer met the bangs. So I'm just going to elevate a bit higher, and just blend that into the fringe ever so slightly. I'm going to take parallel sections over directing to the center as I did initially in the bang section and just take that little corner off. So here's our finished product with Liberty.
I love the way the layers have really brought out Liberty's natural wave on top. We diffused to finish her to really show off all the pieciness and movement in the haircut. All right, thank you for joining us. I'm Erica. I hope you enjoyed this haircut. Hey.